Okay, welcome to lesson six. We're going to open our 06 start. You'll notice there's a picture of this guy with the glasses and the spiky hair. And then there's a uh, background that we're not going to worry about at this point. We're going to just work on the guy. Um, now, this is kind of a two part project. We're going to do part of it as lesson six and part of it as lesson seven. So the first half, we're just going to get started on this now. But the first thing we do, as always, rename it. O6. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to start out right now. We're going to get the, the uh, quick selection tool. And we're going to try and select this guy. Let's see if I can get in a little closer. Nope. That's the best it's going to get. So I put it on his head. Notice it put this little extra. I'm not going to worry about that for now. Okay, so right now it's got everything from his hair and all the way around here. Okay, this kind of sucks on, on uh, what do you call it, on Photopea. It's much easier on Photoshop, but we'll make it work. So I'm going to hold down Alt. And that minuses or subtracts these areas. So I'm just slowly clicking on them, putting them back in, pulling them out. It's such a pain. Um, okay, it's almost there on that side. So see how our dotted line is up and around. We still got to fight this back area. Okay, almost have it. We're going to put that little chunk in. Oops, I alt. Dang it. I know. It's really annoying. We're going to get it as good as we can. Super frustrating. Okay, so we'll fix that later. Um, I think we've got a pretty decent starting point. All right. I know we have to fix this. But I don't even want to mess with it right now. We'll fix it later when we do our adjustments. All right. So we got all of that. Now we go up and we do the refine edge. Okay, and that's going to open this thing. Now I know you've not used this yet. It's kind of a trip. So we're going to change this to 20. The size is 20. Now... The gray part, if you go in and paint it with the gray, it tries to figure out, like you see on the right, how you've got some of this weirdness going on with the hair and there's a little bit on the collar. The gray will try and figure it out. So I, I roll my mouse a little bit and I'm going to use the gray to go in and paint these areas that I think it needs to look at a little closer. I'm going to use the hand and then go back to the gray. So I'm telling it, hey, um, you need to fix that. That's not what I want. Now, it's not going to be perfect. But the more I work with it, the more it tends to figure out, oh, I see what you're wanting. Again, Photoshop is much better at doing this than this program is. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but you know, until we can actually get on the computers at school and, and Photoshop, this will work. Okay, a little bit on this little part back here. I'm try and clean that up. Now it's interesting that when it cleans up one area, it looks at the other areas and goes, oh, I see what you're trying to do. Um, all right, let's scroll down and see what we can find Okay, obviously the shirt is a mess. I'm going to pull that over so I can see that. Um, now, if I use white, that paints in the areas that we want. So if I use the white and I paint in this stuff, it tells the machine, oh, hey, he must want that. So I'm going to paint in a little bit of that. Okay, now be careful with this because what will happen is 
it'll get just way too complicated. Um, and you'll have way more to fix than, than not. Okay. I think that's probably a good spot. Um, looking at the, the nose, let's look here on the right, let's see what we got. That all looks pretty good. Again, it's not going to be perfect, but you know we can get it as close as we can. I'm going to come in with the black on this and try and fix some of this area here. See if that didn't really help. All right, well, it was worth a shot. All right, once we get it to where it's it's passable and it looks like it's pretty good, what we're going to do is we're going to go up and we are going to create a layer mask. So you change it to layer mask. Looks like it's a pretty good cutout. Um, it's, a, it's a raster mask, sorry. And then you hit OK. OK, now what happened is the mask basically covered up everything that wasn't inside the selection. It's still there. We can disable the mask it basically is just hiding that stuff okay so again the white adds in the gray figures out what you want and then the black erases Okay, now we need to, to really kind of zoom in here and see what's happening with the nose okay it's a little weird in here so as long as we're on the mask we can go in with our paintbrush and we want white. So we're going to put the white on top down here on our color picker. And let's make this bigger here. Go maybe uh, 20, that's no, too big, 8. And we're going to paint that back in. Okay, now we got a little funkiness in the glasses. So what I might do is, is click here and then hold down shift and then click again and it'll paint the rest of that in. Okay, and again, I'm, I'm using the paintbrush with white. I can do the same thing down here. You can see where the shirt has some holes in it. If I use, oops, let me undo that. Okay, so again, I'm painting on the mask. So those spots that I said don't worry too much about, like the neck, see how it's kind of transparent there? If I go back in with the brush, that's not the brush, this is the brush, I can paint that back in. If I'm very careful, I can clean that up. Oops, undo that. Okay, now there was some funkiness along his back, so I might make this a little bit bigger and try and paint in as carefully as I can along that edge. Not perfect, but, you know, close. Okay, that looks pretty good. This actually worked better the second time that I'm doing it. Um, the first time I did it was not quite so successful. So the hair doesn't look great, but I mean, it, it's passable. When you zoom out, you won't be able to see that the hair is kind of choppy. So um, yeah, we've got a pretty good cutout right now. So let's go file and save this. And let's keep on. Okay, so we're going to go down here to the bottom and we're going to hit this little thing under the colors so it'll, a rectangle with a circle. It's the quick mask mode. So I click on that and I make sure my colors are back to default. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in because I want to do something with these glasses. They're not quite dramatic enough. So 
I'm going to grab my brush and I'm going to take this down to, I don't know, let's go down to like five. Is that too small? Maybe a little bit bigger, 10. And what I'm going to do is it's a, it's a mask that I'm creating. So I'm, I'm selecting this area. So what I can do is I know this part is straight, so I can click and drag and maybe over to about here. I hold down shift and then click on the other side. I'll do it on the bottom as well. Click once, hold down shift, and then click where I want it to end. Okay, so it's not perfect. Um, now I don't need that part there, but I do want the frames. So I'm gonna come down and try and paint that in. Again, it's not perfect, so we can come in and fix it. Um, let's switch the color so white is on top. And we're going to make this about half the size and zoom in. So what I'm doing is I'm basically going to select the glasses frames so I can change the color. So yeah, as I come in here, I can pull out some of this stuff that is not the globes too much. Switch that back and put it back. Come on there. Not used to using the mouse. Again, on this one, black is going to paint it in. That's the part you want. White will erase it on this, this uh, quick mask. Technically, what I'm doing is the black is, right now, the stuff I'm painting is going to select what we don't want. Um, but we're going to invert it to make that work. Now. This is something I did because I was being a little extra about it. But you can take this way down, go to like two, and we'll take these hairs out of here. You don't really have to do this, but man, I think it really kind of looks cool if you do. So I'm just painting some of the hair back in. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm sort of guesstimating here. But it'll look like, when I change the color here, that the hair is going over the top, even though it's not 100% accurate. When we zoom out, you won't be able to tell. Okay, so in theory, that's the glasses. Um, and I could actually clean this up a little bit. See how I've got a little too much up here? So maybe I'll go in and fix that. Get part of his face. Hold down shift, and then it takes it out. All right, so what I've done is I've painted in a mask like we did on the first thing. So in theory, it's masking out the glasses. So watch what happens. I zoom back. So you can see what's going on. If I wanted to, I could go in here and, and paint in some of this stuff. Maybe I will. I can see the glasses here. If I want to be super extra about it. All right. When I turn off the quick mask down at the bottom, look what happens. It's selected those areas. But if I control Z, notice it selected everything but those areas. So technically, it masked those. So for us to select the glasses, we have to go up to select and do the inverse. We're going to select the opposite of what we have selected. So now, if you zoom back in, you'll see it's actually selected the glasses. All right. Very cool. Um, now we're going to go up and we're going to go image, adjustments, and we are going to change the hue and saturation. So if I change the hue, you'll see that it should be changing the glasses, but it's not. Um, let's see. Why is that not working? Weird. Uh 
oh, I need to be on the picture. Now I can go image adjustments, hue and saturation, and it should work. There we go. Okay, so that's you have to make sure that once you finish your mask, you have to click back on the thumbnail of the photo because it was just adjusting inside the mask and that doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to try and make these glasses green. Maybe if I go at like, I don't know, 83-ish. And if I change the saturation to like a negative 45, 46, it's a little more subtle. All right. And I think we just leave the lightness at zero. Okay, so we've basically changed the color of his glasses. Hit OK. And let's Control D. And we are going to save. So save it as a PSD. Notice those little areas where we painted in the, the hair and painted some of the green. Okay, it, it's not totally obvious, but you can sort of see there's some green in here. And it's enough for your eye to go, oh, okay, those glasses are green. And his hair is hanging over it. So it, it fools your eye enough. And when you think about it, I mean, we're going to be looking at, at this place. So definitely uh, that helps. All right, let's go on to the next step. We are going to go to the model layer, and we are going to duplicate that layer. Okay. Now on the copy, I'm going to right click on the mask and I'm going to hit apply. Okay, notice the mask disappeared. It basically cut out our picture. Okay, so I'm going to turn off this layer here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, so what we have is basically just the kid cut out with a guy. So I turn off the model layer. I have the background off. Um, we are going to click on the model copy. So this guy here is layer zero. Why don't we call that model? Just so we know. In fact, let's, let's call that model copy. We should have named this before. And then this one is actually the model layer because he is our model. All right, just so we're able to keep them straight. All right, so we're on the model layer. And we're going to do something interesting here. We're going to edit and click on Puppet Warp. Notice it made a little mesh around the guy. OK, this is a, such a trip. You're going to love this. All right. so. What we're going to do is we're going to come in, maybe control plus so we can see it a little better. And we are going to click along the line, just like a little bit inside. We're going to add some nodes around the shirt, but we're only going to go up to the collar. We're not going to go up into the, this area here. Okay. Add a couple more, go down. And we'll take it around the back and one at the bottom. All right. You zoom back out. I'm going to click on this one at the top of his collar. This is going to blow your mind. Now, if I click on that and I hold down and I drag it down, it leans his head back. So it's, it's kind of distorting. If I lean him back like that. And then let go. Okay, we've tilted his head. It's kind of a, a weird distortion thing. Um, and then what we're going to do when we got it where we want it, we'll click confirm. Okay, so here's what we had. Here's where we are now. Kind of a trip. It's a little janky in here where his neck meets the shirt, but, you know, it's, it's passable. Um, we could have messed with it a little bit more and gotten it looking a little more like we want, but I think it's it's good enough. <clears throat> All right, let's go on to our model copy layer. 
And um, on the, uh, the standard Photoshop lessons, they do some other things. I'm going to kind of do it the easy way for you. Um, what, what they want to do is add a shadow. And what they would do is they would duplicate it and color it in and move it over. And that just seemed like a lot of extra steps that we don't need um, if we don't have to do it. So we're going to go while we're on the model copy layer and we're going to grab the effects and add a drop shadow. Okay. Now here's where it gets interesting. Okay. So there's our drop shadow going on our multiply. Um, normally a drop shadow will pop up kind of like, you know, like this. Um, but if we go in and we change the settings, so our opacity, we're going to set it at 50. We're going to change our distance to 30. The spread, <clears throat> let's see, where was I at? Uh, no, let's take the opacity down to 32. I was looking at the wrong one. Distance will be 156. So we really want to have it jump out. Boom. The spread, we're going to put at zero. And then the size, we're going to put at 3. Okay, so we can still see the detail in the shadow. Okay, and then our angles at 19. That all looks good. Um, now we could change the angle if we wanted to, but I kind of like it there. Back at like 19. Okay, so now we've got a shadow. Now if you turn on the background, you can see, hey, there's a cool shadow. Now if we want to, you know, change this at all, we can go in and change the opacity so that it's even softer, you know, whatever. But I think 32 is cool for now for what we need. <clears throat> all right. Let's go back to our model copy layer. And we are going to grab the magic wand is in here under the object selection tool or the quick selection magic wand and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on his head and I'm going to grab his hair okay now notice it didn't quite get it all so I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to click on these other areas that it didn't quite get okay, there's a spot there now I don't need everything but you know, I want to get a pretty good amount of it. I think that might be okay. Maybe this little spot here. There we go. All right, so we've got a good amount of it now. It doesn't have to be every single little dot. I think having some of that not selected is going to work out in our favor. All right. Next step is we're going to go down to the layers palette and we're going to add a new adjustment layer. Um, we're going to, uh, let's see, I wanted to do something else. Let's go to levels. I forgot to write this down in my notes. And we're going to change the levels in this thing and we're going to bump up the darks. And we'll bring down the lights. So let's take the darks up to... I guess 20. Actually, let's go up to 30. Because we're going to take this one down to 200. So the blacks to 30. Look how dark that is. Nice. Um, and then when we're done, we'll close that. Now don't deselect because I want to change some things first. We're going to change the opacity down to about 50. Okay, so it's darkened it, but it's not totally overpowered. Okay, our last step, we're gonna go and add another adjustment layer, and this time it's gonna get really whack looking. We're gonna go to color fill. Now notice that red pops up, that is not gonna do us any good. But if we double click on that color, and we change it, and we go to this blue here, and we hit OK. Now when we come back over here, we change the opacity on the color fill to 20. 
and now he's got kind of a cool dye job. In fact, that's a little dramatic. Let's go down to 10. I think that's a much better look. All right, let's control zero to see what we've got. Oh yeah, that looks much more natural. And then we can turn on the background and there's all of lesson six. That's it. Um, let's go up and save as, and then file. We're gonna export it as a JPEG and turn it in. And that's all she wrote, fellas.